First of all, before we get to Mr. Pompeo, just your quick thoughts on uh, the firing of Mr. Tillerson, uh, both in terms of the position itself and to the degree you want to comment on how it was done. So, uh, you know, I was a, a supporter of Tillerson. We talked often. Uh, I thought he gave sound advice to the president. But there's always been a little bit of something there that seemed to be a little bit of a reprieve beginning in uh, December. They seem to be working better together. But they've never perfectly jihad. And I've talked to both of them um, about it as we moved along. So while um, it was sort of surprising the way that it happened, I wasn't surprised that it happened. Um, and uh, you know, look, he's a patriot. I think he's done the best that he could for our nation. I think he's proud he was able to serve our country for 14 months. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're getting ready to move on to another Secretary of State. And how do you think that would change under Pompeo? Well, uh, I don't know Pompeo that well. People that know him say he's very smart. Um, but I think just philosophically, uh, he's more aligned with the president. And one of the questions he'll get during the hearings is, Will he um, accentuate some of the tendencies of the president? Will he give him the full range of options that he has available to him? But my guess is he'll be confirmed. So I think what he'll have is a secretary of state that people around the world thinks uh, speaks more fully for the president, and he probably is more aligned with him. So there's probably a little bit less tension. Uh, but at the same time, you always want to make sure the secretary of state is laying out all of the options right. for the president. And I think Tillerson did that. One of the critiques, though, of Tillerson was that he didn't um, push back more and try to support the State Department, didn't fill so many of the positions uh, during this period. He talked about yeah. how he was trying to reimagine <laughs> um, the department. Yeah. How do you think that changes in a, in a Pompeo-led State Department? Yeah. So I think Secretary Tillerson, it was admirable that he wanted to change the way the State Department worked. Sure. and align it in a different way and that's what a, a CEO of a corporation would do coming in but the fact is he wasn't going to be there for 10 years and it no doubt it bogged him down it created a lot of ill will within the department within the foreign policy establishment uh, I think to a degree uh, the president didn't like the fact that so many positions went unfilled so it, it, you know, as it turns out, he'd have been a lot better off just focusing on the issues that we have around the world. And, uh, um, and I think he knows that. So um, it was problematic, and, and we still have a lot of un unfilled positions. Uh, some of that is due to the White House and the OSA, OGE, the, the guys that approve all these things. But uh, it has been a problem. Senator, how, you know, I don't want to characterize your relationship with President Trump, but we've seen it's been, you know, it's been out in the open for, uh, I don't know, for six, seven months. It's had its ups and downs. That's one way yeah. of putting it right now. And uh, I think, you know, you sort of warm to him. Then there's other times where you guys are, I don't know, not, not uh, quite as, uh, as, as friendly as before. But going into North Korea in this negotiation and knowing that sometimes he's impulsive or perhaps his own, you know, he, he, he's going to make the decision anyway as president. So sometimes he may not ask for as much input from everybody else. So this is the yep. guy going in to negotiate with, with Kim Jong-un. Are you, are you comfortable with such a high stakes negotiation yep. being handled by this, the, the, what you know about President yep. Trump? So look, uh, first of all, Joe, as to the relationship, I, we've never stopped talking. He called me Friday night, called me yesterday morning at uh, 10 o'clock. I mean, we've talked all the way through. Our relationship is very direct, very frank. I, I think people would be surprised to see how much, to know how much we talk. And this whole situation with Secretary Tillerson, we've talked often, the President and I have talked often. I've been very aware of the situation there. Uh, and tried to, to bridge the two to move ahead. As it relates to, to North Korea, um, look, the president is very entrepreneurial, let's face it. I mean, just like, you know, he'll just pick up the phone and, and call you about something that typically a chief of staff or someone else will do. Um, Tillerson was very process oriented. These big corporations, they think about things for a long time. You're not going to build a big uh, production facility in Siberia without planning it out for years and so it was just a very very different approach but I'm not concerned about the meetings we'll have plenty of people here who have the institutional knowledge around North Korea uh, to brief there'll be precursors 
Um, I'm glad that it's happening and think there may be an opening, and there's no question that the administration with Tillerson, with Mattis, with Treasury and others have put more pressure on North Korea than they've ever had. So I'm hoping yeah. for a, a good outcome. 60 years, 60 years that we've got nowhere, and, um, you know, and, and now we're going into this, but we do have a couple of nuclear powers, theoretically, uh, and a lot's at stake with that. But, but then again, the, the potential for upside is is we haven't seen any potential for upside in 60 years. So, uh, yeah. but you know if there's downside, it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be, well, you, know, you know how they'll run with that. Well, it, you know, Joe, it's hard to see how there's a lot of downside. Right. I, I mean, agree. the guy's right. building nuclear weapons and, you right. know, the ability to deliver them and miniaturize and re-enter the atmosphere, so. No, but the, the Democrats so, are horrified that Donald that's Trump right. is, is the guy right. negotiating this with Kim Jong-un. They're horrified at what uh, the potential, with what can go wrong, because they think he's, insane. Well, the, again, there'll be, I am sure, tremendous amounts of work, and I know a right, lot of people right. have talked to the president about the sort of the foreplay that needs to occur here to make sure it works out properly. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.